worship your holy name. Shall we open our Bible this morning to the book of Judges chapter 11 verse 29 to 36. Judges chapter 11 verse 29 to 36. Yeah. Judges chapter 11 verse 29 to 36. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah and he passed through Gilead and Manasseh and passed through Mispah of Gilead and from Mispah of Gilead, he advanced towards the people of Hermon. Verse 30. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will indeed deliver the people of Ammon into my hand, then it will be that whatever comes out of the doors of my house to meet me, to meet me when I return in peace from the people of Hermon, shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up as a burnt offering. Verse 32. So Jephthah advanced toward the people of Ammon to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his hands. Verse 33. And he defeated them from Heroar as far as Minith, twenty cities, and to Abel Keramin with a very great slaughter. Thus, the people of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. Verse 34. When Jephthah came to his house at Mizpah, there was his daughter coming out to meet with him with timbre and dancing. And she was his only child. Beside her, he had neither son nor daughter. Verse 35. And it came to pass when he saw her that he tore his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low. You are among those who trouble me, for I have given my word to the Lord. I cannot go back on it. So she said to him, My father, if you have given your word to the Lord, do to me according to what has gone out of your mouth. Because the Lord has avenged you of your enemies, the people of Ammon. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you business with God. Mighty Father in heaven, we thank you this morning. I truly know we cannot get anything except you have decided to give it to us. So we come this morning with all our hearts humbled in your presence for you to completely vomit your heart, vomit your thoughts into our life this morning. Let everyone who's standing here under the voice that is coming from this altar be touched, be transformed, be renewed. Thank you, Father. We declare this atmosphere free, flow of your presence. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we've all declared. Hallelujah. Amen. Business with God. All right. Of course, we know what it is to do business. Hallelujah. To do business, we have to involve uh, a party and the other party. There's no one that does business alone by himself. And no interaction with the community or interaction with somebody else. How would the person be able to profit if he does business alone and buying things by himself and selling to himself? What profit can result from such? Virtually no profit. No profit at all. Hallelujah. 
So, for us to be able to do a business, we need a horse and at least one person to be able to profit, to be able to invest in that business and as a result, profit from that business. Now, we're talking about business with God. We're talking about the, a contractual agreement between God and a man to accomplish a particular goal that is set by both in that contractual agreement. So business with God is simply having a clean, clear conversation, engagement with, the God, with God with a set goal, set focus, set input, and set guidelines. Hallelujah. So we are told clearly the portion of the, of the scripture that study to be quiet, let every man mind his business. Hallelujah. So God is a God of business. And we have saw the case of Jephthah, or what he discussed with God. He engaged with a business with God. And he said, after you have helped me to overcome in this war, uh, the one that first appeared, that first met me on the way, is going to be the one to be declared for you. And God he heard that and listened carefully and worked with Jephthah based on that conversation of business conversation. And at the end of the real day, Jephthah had no choice. Even his daughter had no choice. And they give unto God what belonged to God. Because God did his own part of the contractual agreement. Why this message today, that some of us today, we've been thinking why some Christians are growing and obtaining some favors. And where some are not thinking, we're thinking that we are not also obtaining a favor like others. Where some Christians are getting results quickly, and where some are not getting results quickly. Uh, some Christians have been devoted to the ministry of complaint, rather than devoted to the ministry of business with God. They rather talk about people. Uh, I mean, those who talk about people, uh, it is not likely that they are going to be a leader. Somebody, a leader should be talked about, right? A follower uh, should be the one uh, to be talking about a leader. Not the leader talking about the, 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 the follower. Praise the Lord. So it's not likely that any Christian who is just going around and complaining uh, is going to be rewarded in that attitude. The only thing that rewards a Christian is his business with God. And that's why Christianity is a personal relationship with God. It is not relationship based on what I had from my pastor. It's not a relationship based on what they discuss in the town. It's not a relationship based on the teamwork <laughs> of my organization, association. It's not a relationship based on the on human philosophy or human ideas. It is a relationship based on persons. Hallelujah. God as a person and you as a person. Both of you agree together to be able to act, act, achieve a common goal. Hallelujah. So uh, when we are engaged with the business with God, then we know that you are having a contractual agreement with God. Hallelujah. You have a contractual agreement with God. You have a guideline on that contract. You have a result that must em emanate from that contractual business agreement. You also have inputs that both of you are going to put into that contractual agreement. And of course, when both parties tone, the tones in that agreement are all obeyed, it is unevitable to have a formidable result. Amen. Everybody say, formidable result. Hallelujah. Now, I want to let you know why, 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 why? Why is the need to do business with God? Number one, because God is a reasonable bargainer. God is a reasonable bargainer. He does not do people. God does not do people. He does not cheat people. God does not cheat people. He is God of justice and fairness. Hallelujah. So it's worthy of doing business with because we have found in several places in the scripture that's a, that's a reasonable bargainer. He does not do anyone. He is a rewarder of anyone that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to clear that what a bargain means. A bargain is an agreement between two or more parties. 
as to what each party will do for the other. Hallelujah. Look at, look at it. Do for the other. So, two parties. A bargainer is a dealer or a negotiator of the term of traction or contracts. Alright? Now, we're going to look at an example here where God depicts, where the attitude of God is depicting uh, bargaining. The bargaining power. Hallelujah. In the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 says this. Come now, let us reason together. Everybody say reason together. So God loved to include men sometimes in his formidable plan and goal. Hallelujah. We saw that with his relationship with Abraham. Right? He had a clean, clear discussion with Abraham. Hallelujah. He has a really contractual agreement with Abraham. He said, go to the place where I will show you. Abraham, listen. Abraham obey is part of the contract. I will saw the result today. Amen. Come, let us reason together. God is a reasonable bargainer. He does not cheat or do people. Now look at the book of Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, verse 29 to 33. Where God himself was engaged in conversation. A contractual conversation with Abraham. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 18, verse 29 to 33. Genesis 18, 29 to 33. So he said, if I find there 45... I will not destroy it. Right? Verse 29. And he spoke to him yet again and said, Suppose there should be 40 found there. So he said, I will not do it for the sake of 40. Right? Sodom and Gomorrah, that's what they are referring to here. God, I mean, uh, Abraham is interceding, having a contractual business agreement with God regarding Sodom and Gomorrah. And God is saying that, okay, I want to destroy your entire town. Uh, <laughs> Abraham said, why will you, because I mean, if you have righteous people there, why would you want to destroy the righteous with the people who are against you? And he began to bargain. Hallelujah. And look at verse 30, 30. Then he said, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Suppose 30 should be found there. So he said, I will not do it if I find 30, 30 there. Verse 31. And he said, indeed now, I have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 should be found, should be found there. So he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 20. Look at the way Abraham taking his time to bargain. <laughs> Hallelujah. And God was listening. Hallelujah. Verse 32. And then he said, let not the Lord be angry. And I will speak but one more. Suppose ten should be found there. <laughs> and he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of ten. So the Lord went his way. As soon as he had finished speaking with Abraham, Abraham returned to his place. I will eventually discover that the, Lord, uh, the, the, the Sodom and Gomorrah was eventually destroyed. Hallelujah. Now, I believe that if Abraham has taken his time to negotiate further, right? Like take two are there, one are there. Amen. Two are there or one is there. Maybe God will have walked alongside with Abraham. That's very important. The way the tone of our contractual agreement is very important when doing business with God. Some people believe in not paying their tithes. All right? I'm sorry to say this. Uh, they need the preacher to preach to them so heavily about giving to God. All right? I'm not the kind of preacher who wants to dwell in you know issue of uh, giving this or give that. And build the whole sermon on money. That's not the kind of preacher I want to be. But I want to be a preacher that speaks God's mind. And people receive God's mind. And the Holy Ghost leads them to give unto God. Because God doesn't need to be helped. In terms of how a man can be led to sacrifice unto God. Holy Ghost has a way of whispering to people. To make them do what God wants them to do. And if they refuse, the word of God is very sensitive and powerful. The word God doesn't need to be helped. People will find out they are disobedient to God. So it's a matter of business. Hallelujah with God. So God does not say, you need to be forced to give unto me. God does not say that. But the Bible says, God loves a cheerful giver. If somebody just say, okay, all I have, I'm selling them, I'm showing them in the feet of God. Do you know what? God will not disagree in that contractual business agreement. God will take it. So the level you take God, that's the level God's going to go with you. 
Does it mean you are going to miss heaven? <laughs> you are not going to. There are some things that when you don't do them, you are not going to miss heaven. But mind you, in heaven, there are, beings, there are many mansions in heaven. Hallelujah. We are told in the scripture, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Okay, there are mansions that are meant for those who are not doing some stuff. Because these mansions are going to be based on rewards. Right? Behold, my reward, I'm, I'm coming. And my reward is with me. To give to every man according to how their work shall be. Hallelujah. So God may not stop you from making heaven. But maybe when you get to heaven, you might have to know. You might have to determine your own mansion based on the business you do with God. Because God is very fair. Hallelujah. See, Abraham here negotiated with God. God listened. But, alas, Abraham did not know that the last statement he made was not sufficient enough to be able to have God change his mind in destroying the Sodom and Gomorrah. Number two, why is it good to do business with God? God loves to be held responsible for for what he says or do in all matters. Amen. Let me, let me go rewind that again. Why is it good to do business with God? Number two, God law to be held responsible for what he says or do in every matter. Hallelujah. See, anyone who wants to take God into serious conversation will need to know how to take God's word. Right? He says, so shall my word be. It shall not return unto me, nor of God. But it shall do that which I ask it to do. So God is not a waster. He doesn't like speaking his word and a word falling to the ground. In fact, he doesn't even like the word of his own beloved, those who are very close to him in business. He doesn't allow their word to fall to the ground. We saw the example of Moses. He said none of his word of Moses fell to the ground. So God does not like wasting including his virtue so when god speaks he means the business and so some people today some of us today we are playing around with god with, with the with the word of god we are playing around with the holy bible we treat the holy bible as secondary uh we think the holy bible is just you know when i'm free to read let me just read anytime i like but the holy bible we have been told he said this word of god shall not depart from your mouth in it Shall you meditate day and night? That means God is a faithful, is a faithful person to whatever he says. So God doesn't want any of his word to fall to the ground. As you can, as you, as you can see in, the, in the today's uh, Bible reading, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verse 1 to 10, when God was saying he's trusting all the people to pass across all he has said. Every encounter they had with him, to their children. God is excited to have people speak back to him what he already said. God is provoked into action. When you talk to him like a child, he talks to you, you're talking back to him. God will suspend everything. He said, I honor my word, mother my name. God can suspend every activity in heaven because somebody cried on the surface of the earth. Provoke him with his word. Hallelujah. Of course, we saw the say that Meshach Abednego. How the man shout, they say, even if God will not save us. The same way God responded that day, that's the way God responds to people who take God's word seriously. Hallelujah. Doing business with God is taking God's part of the contractual agreement serious. Hallelujah. Taking God's word for what he says. Not trying to create a plan B for what he has said. In that contract, in your business with him, God revealed to you in your dream that this is going to happen to you. And because the devil came with another bad dream and tried to pollute your mind, you quickly change your mind and begin to tell people, I don't think that dream is true. God said, really? I just started a business with you. And you don't want to take my business very seriously. I give you a dream. You're playing around with it. Also, okay, so, so it be unto you as you wish for yourself. God doesn't like people taking him for granted. Every bit of word that comes from God is power. Ha! Jesus said, He said, flesh profit nothing. The word I speak to you is spirit and life. God wants his word to be taken seriously. If any Christian wants to grow, if any Christian wants to become big, 
the word of God and the contractual agreement must be honored. We must learn on how to engage God in business of his word. And tell him what he says. Hallelujah. God suspends everything when he hears his word spoken, speaking, being spoken to him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 50, 45 verse 11. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 11. Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands. Command ye me. Can you see what God said? When God said, command me, it means what he's saying. Go, go, work of my hand. He know, it means what he's saying. When he make an agreement with you in a contract, he doesn't just make that agreement for fun of it. He is serious about it. He said, look, my friend, you got to consider this contractual agreement. Okay? If, you, if, you, if I tell you, I'm going to expand you, I'm going to bless you. And I'm, and I'm asking you, as I ask the rich young ruler, to go and sell all that he has. If I ask you to give me just one dollar, and I'm giving you condition, what is going to happen next? And you ignore my part of the conversation, and you go global, supporting yourself with the scripture, and saying, God is the God that doesn't need money from people. God will say, well, I will work with you on that too, because I don't need the money of people to survive. But only those who take their time. To sacrifice and understand my deep wisdom. They are the ones that will bless. God cannot be questioned regarding that. God is sovereign. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 26. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 26. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. <laughs> State your case. You may be acquitted. Can you imagine that? That's God. Pagini pal of God. God loves to be reminded. So let's talk together. Let's speak concerning what I've said. What is your case? Present your case. And I will find it to action. Many Christians today, many of us today do not want to present cases. We are too afraid of having a personal conversation with God. So what really makes us to, to, to relate with God is what people say around us. <laughs> what people discuss around us is what is guiding us. We still do not have this personal content, this personal relating with God. And God is saying, this is not the way I want business to be done with me. If anyone wants to go extra mile, see you are going to make heaven. No, sometimes we don't do business with God. We can, you, 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 you are going to make heaven. You might just have a simple, you believe, you are working with God, you are committed, you are holy. But there are certain things that you are going to be getting here in this world. Is that the gift shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, shall men give unto your bosom. That is not the men in the, in the kingdom of God, the men on earth. So, so what is he saying in essence? He's saying that if you do that kind of business with me, I'm going to be working with you on a, on a personal basis, on a vertical relationship base, and I'm going to extend your kingdom. And nobody can just stand je being jealous about what God does in a man who knows how to do business with God. So stop listening to what people are saying around and saying this and that. If God, just, just learn on how to be personally relating with God. Hallelujah. Otherwise, Christianity is going to be boring to us. It will be boring. Amen. If you generalize our relationship with God, with all, like other people do, we are going to be very bored. But if we stand with the Lord and have a personal relationship, personal conversation, something is bothering your mind. You say, God, let's talk together. You said you are a bargainer. Come, let us reason together. Can we discuss this? I have an issue. I have a low GPA. Look, my parents can't afford to sponsor the remaining part of my education. There's an issue on ground here. Father, I'm very confused. I don't know what next to do. Learn on how to remind God and take his word the way it is and discuss with him. He is going to listen to you. He is going to reason together. Say, come, let us reason together. So God is reasonable. He is going to reason with you. God is not to be feared and run away from. Hallelujah. God is to be reverent. Right? When you say fear God, it means referencing God. It means making God the author and the finisher of your life. That's what referencing God is about. Fear God is all about. Fear God is not about, oh, uh, like the people that came to the land of, of Israel. They say they fear God of Israel and they serve their own idol. That's not the way Christianity is. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isaiah. Isaiah 
Psalm 43, verse 26 in NIV. See the way he put it. Review the past for me. Look at that. Review the past for me. Let us argue the matter together. Ha! God like argument. Oh, I can see that God is a lawyer. Hallelujah. He's a lawyer. I mean, maybe he's a judge, actually. Actually, he's a God of he's a, he's a God of justice, right? So he's a judge. So you he want to come, he wanted to come in the, in his in his place of his word like a lawyer and reason together with him and argue together with him. Amen. I said, present your case. And then I said, I will find it to action. But if somebody is ignorant, that's why the Bible says, my people die because they lack knowledge. If someone is lacking knowledge of God's word, I wonder how he will be able to do good business with God. What are we going to use as our defense? Word of God should be our defense in whatever we want to do. Hallelujah. You have the right. God has given you the right to freely go to the throne of grace to obtain mercy. We don't need a priest to stand in between anymore. Or a big daddy pastor, professional pastor, to make you be able to relate with God. God wants you to take his word seriously. Talk with him with his word and arrive at a contractual agreement and look at him. What I will not fulfill is his own part of the agreement. Number three. Why is it good? Why is it excellent to do business with God? Hallelujah. God is God, let me tell you again. God responsibly honors human tone. God responsibly honors human tone in any contractual business agreement with him. Hallelujah. He honors your tone. Amen. Whatever you say you want to do, say, God, if you can give me that, like Jephthah said, he said, wherever I come, wherever I meet, the first meet, it's going to be the sacrifice. It's going to be yours. He made a declaration. The same way too, remember. Uh, Hannah declared Samuel to be God's own. When he was not given back yet, yeah, when he was not pregnant, was barren. When God opened our womb, he said, Before God opened, I said, If you can give me this, Lord, if you can give me a child, I'm going to give that child to you and dedicate that child to you. And he fulfilled our own part of the contractual agreement. And that's why Samuel was a unique prophet in the land. Hallelujah. God also did his own part, not only that he gave him pregnancy but also prosper the life of the child. Some people today, they declare their own children, their own seed to be God's own. And when the, when the children grow up, they, they withdraw from that contractual agreement. And the child is going here and they are seeking for help. Amen. Having trouble for the rest of their life. And some, some parents have made a bad agreement. They have not fulfilled a part of agreement with God. And so they are suffering today. Is anybody hearing me today? Your parents have made the wrong contractual agreement with the Lord. And has not fulfilled his own part of that contractual vow of God. I pray God of mercy shall come around and liberate you from all the bandage and mm -hmm. all the causes of lack of agreement or lack of fulfillment of their part of the agreement with God in Jesus' name. You are free in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6. When you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay for... Do not delay to pay it. Do not delay to pay it. When you make a vow before the Lord, do not delay to pay it. When you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it. For he has no pleasure in fools. Hallelujah. He's not talking about you. Do not, he said do not delay. That means that it's not only that you didn't pay it. He doesn't say, oh, do not, do not fail to pay it. He said, do not delay. That's more serious responsibility here. All right? You're going to follow the contractual agreement. Do not delay. Hallelujah. Many of us today are delaying the agreement we have with God. He said, if you can do it for me, I'm going to do that for you. One day I'm going to sing. I'm going to dance in your presence. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to give you something in the house of God. I'm going to bless the man of God. I'm going to bless the woman of God. And today, they have not fulfilled that agreement. And their progress is slowing down because it was they that actually had a contractual Agreement in business with God. God did not ask for it. Hallelujah. That's why it's very important. Look at the next line. It says, For he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you vowed. You are the one that made the vow. You are the one that made the business. You are the one that made the contractual agreement. Better not to vow than to vow and not pay. Who want to live with a friend who will not keep to his word? Who want to be close to a friend who is not faithful to what he says? God is a man that is faithful. To whatever he says. 
And he wants us to, to be faithful to whatever we have said to him in that contract. Do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin. Some people are too faster in their mouth than their heart. Amen. You see, they, like Pharisee. These people honor me with their mouth, but their heart is very far away from me. So their mouth is always making their whole body sin because they are hypocrites. They are too much talking. They talk too much and then they do nothing. Hallelujah. We need to reduce the talking. Amen. Bible says, be quick to hear, slow to speak. When we say something, that we are going to do something for God, we must be committed to it. Hallelujah. Because God will definitely go to demand his own part of fulfilling the contractual agreement from your part. Hallelujah. Do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin. Nor, nor, nor say before the messenger of God that it was an error. Why should God be angry at your excuse and destroy the work of your hand? Hallelujah. It's so serious. And I'm going to tell you one story here about Matthew chapter 20, verse 1 to 15. Matthew chapter 20, verse 1 to 15. The story about God making the kingdom of God to be like a landowner. A landowner went in the morning, he went at about uh, 9 o'clock, he went at about 12 o'clock, he went about uh, 3 o'clock outside to look for laborers. And as a laborer, in, in, in looking for the laborer, they had an agreement. You know, the first laborer he met, he had an agreement that is going to pay him a denarius. And he went to another place and he saw somebody just there hanging around. I do have no job. He called him, they had an agreement. He, all those he called all together, different time of the day. They had an agreement. All right? And then they started working for, for him, that the landowner. And at the end of the day, the landowner gave them what they deserve according to the agreement. And the people that came, uh, came very early said, how come, how come, how come do you have to give to us what you are given? Exactly the same thing, they gave those who came late, who came dead in the evening. And we've been here since morning. How can it be the same denarius that will give everybody? He said, hey, my friend, uh, are, you, are you trying to be convertious? Amen. Let's look at verse 13. He said, saying, these last men have worked only one hour, and you made them equal to us who have borne the body and the eat of the day. Verse 13. But he answered one of them and said, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Oh, yes. Business with God makes a difference. Hallelujah. That's why some Christians' life could be different from the way they live. With, you know, the way they experience the result with other people because their own personal relationship might be different from yours. Hallelujah. The way we take God, that's where God will take us. Okay? He said to the forward, I will behave myself forward. Okay? To the faithful, I will behave myself faithful. God is a just God. He is very fair. And He's telling us today, it is all about the business with me. Faithfulness in that agreement in the contractual business. Agreement. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. See what is it? Say, friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me in denarius? Verse 14. Take what is yours and yours and your and, and go your way. I wish to give to this last man the same as to you. You can't change my sovereignty. We have an agreement. You cannot just change what is there. All right? It doesn't matter what argument. We agreed together before this whole thing came to be. Before the reward came. So whatever we have agreed on, that's what we're going to work with. Hallelujah. I'm talking to you today. God has given you a big dream. And then you are negotiating your dream with the circumstance around you. It doesn't matter what is happening around you. It does not matter what the opinions of the brothers of Joseph were all about. Joseph was a man who was business oriented. He made up his mind, I'm not going to commit sin. I'm not going to sin again. I'm not going to allow the pressure of my brothers and sisters to put me to standing against God's purpose. He just walked with God and God walked with him. No matter what condition he found himself, he took God to be present with him. Hallelujah. God that is always present in storm. God that was also present with, with, <laughs> with Shedra, Meshach, and Berenigo. Ah, God was taken as a partner by Joseph. And so therefore, Joseph along the way prospered. Even when he was serving as a slave, he was prospering in whatever he lays his hand upon. That's what the scripture declared. And even in the prison, Joseph was prospering because he knew 
how to do business of relationship with the Lord. What position are we today? Are we really doing business with God? Or we are just coming to church or fellowship and do, you know, as, uh, according to spur of the moment. We need to redress our relationship with God. When you, somebody are given to go and prepare a message and minister, and the minister didn't prepare, he didn't do any fasting. <laughs> Some people were given uh, a venue to, to minister. They fasted the whole day and they delivered the message. The message make a difference. And somebody will give himself oh, just about 10 minutes preaching, and he doesn't have time, no meditation, no prayer. Hey, guess what? It's about business with God. You see, what you get as a result is what you bargain for. Hallelujah. If you bargain for non preparedness, God is going to bargain for making your world to fall to the ground. May our world today not fall to the ground in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. 15. Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own thing? Or is your eye evil because I'm good? Matthew chapter 7 verse 11. Matthew chapter 7 verse 11. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? So we must know how to talk, how to ask. You know, people are just complaining. They don't ask God what they want, but they talk to their friend what they want. Ah, See, there's no time to talk in business with God, but they prefer to discuss with friends, even with unbelievers, and they just keep away from talking with God. And, and say, God is not doing things for me. Oh, my friend. God still wants us to talk, <sighs> to have agreement. God is not a waster. Hallelujah. He said, come, let us reason together. He said, I will still require, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, he said, I will still, 36, 37, Ezekiel 36, verse 37, he said, I will still require the house of Israel to inquire me to inquire from me to do this for them. He said all the stuff, but they need to talk. He said, open your mouth, I will feel it. God wants us to discuss, have a personal discussion with him, a good business relation with him. Hallelujah. Finally, God is Hadaman believer in law of sowing and reaping. God must be engaged in business because he is an adamant believer in the law of sowing. And reaping. Luke chapter 6 verse 38. Luke 6 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. Will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will measure unto you. That's a business. <laughs> Can you see God? God is discriminating here. The same measure that is made that you measure. Amen. Prayer. <laughs> measure that you used to measure, it shall be given back unto you. Ah, that is discrimination in business. It depends on the agreement. If you agree with me that you're going to sell all your house for the sake of my work, I am going to reward you in a bountiful way. That's what he's saying. Hallelujah. God is a God of business. You know, you decide to abandon your career because of the gospel say, he said, he said to the disciple, he said, none of them shall lose their reward. Hallelujah. You, you study engineering, having four master degree, and you ended up being a pastor, and you take a, a very small job to be able to support the work of God. God will not let that go. And that is why I cannot be poor. Rest upon your faith. I cannot be poor. I, today, I engage business with God. My life has been taken by the gospel. My life is being given to the gospel. My life is given to the contractual agreement with you. So therefore, I will prosper in the work of my hand. Come on, come on. Lord Jesus, today, I take a new dimension. I will walk in your way. I will stay with you. I will do the business with you. I will never lose again. I will be rewarded for every commitment I've given. Whatever is rendering me to be unfaithful in the commitment you have given to me today, I put an end to them in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I will no longer wallow in poverty, wallow in backwardness. I will grow. Your great and mighty shall envelop me. Oh Lord Jesus, help me, Lord, to be faithful in business with you. In Jesus' name, we have the prayer. One more prayer. I want to open your mouth loud this morning because I say, Vashu, that.
that descended upon this room as I'm praying here. You want to catch up the virtue. Because after today, something will start happening to you. You start receiving energy to be more committed. You begin to see yourself dead. And you begin to see the power of the Holy Ghost reviving your system, giving you the ability to work with God. I'm going to pray this morning. I release myself to this virtue today. That is flowing in this room. This virtue of God. From today, I will find it easy to work with you. Find it easy to do business with you. Hallelujah. Oh, Holy Ghost, we thank you. Thank you for your presence right here. Now I can see the glory of God upon your children this morning. Yes. The ability to do business with God is being released right now. It's being released. There are great there are giants here. There are great CEOs here. There are great people here in this place. Oh, Lord, thank you, Father, for what you are doing for the operation you are performing in the life of your children right now. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we glorify your holy name. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise. These are great men for the future. I see the glory of God cover these people. I see the grace of God descending. As they are embracing it to this morning, as they are all standing and crying and talking to you today, I pray none of this battle will drop off from them. It will stay with you. You will be glorious. You will be lifted above your peers, above your fellow. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are declared. Mighty God, this morning we thank you for the entrance of your given life and understanding. We have to release your word regarding doing business with you. I pray today as your children, hearts are open. As your children's hearts are open to receive another new dimension of relationship. As pray, the enablement from above shall show them. The enablement of God will take over their temple, their heart, their soul. And today, they will begin to enjoy service, commitment, conversation, relationship with God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have declared.